This is an excerpt from an article from MysteriousUniverse.org entitled Scary Real Curses Surrounding the Scariest Movies by Brent Swanser. Demons don't have the monopoly on famous movie curses, and indeed another of the most infamous of these revolves around a story about ghosts. Poltergeist is undeniably one of the classic horror movies of all time. Directed by Toby Hooper and written and produced by none other than Steven Spielberg, it follows the struggles of a suburban family, the Freelings, dealing with a terrifying invasion by malevolent spirits and the kidnapping of their young daughter by these phantoms, who are enthralled to a mysterious, menacing demon referred to simply simply as the beast. The film is notable for its unnerving atmosphere and ability to exploit childhood fears, such as the fear of creepy dolls, the thing under the bed, and the scary tree outside the window, bringing them to life with some truly iconic scenes that serve to do a good job of traumatizing children of the era, myself included. When it was released in 1982, the movie was a huge hit, going on to be spun into two sequels and a remake. The film is also remembered for having one of the most notorious movie curses looming over it. Things were creepy on the Poltergeist set before filming even really began. The rumor is that the filmmakers decided that rather than craft fake plastic skeletons as props in various scenes, which would have been expensive to make, they instead opted to use actual real human bones. The skeletons were most famously used in a harrowing scene in which actress Jo Beth Williams' character finds herself at the bottom of a half-filled swimming pool in a sludge of mud and human skeletons, which proceed to attack her as she tries desperately to cross out of the watery grave. According to the actress, real human skeletons were used in this scene and the film crew did not inform her about it. In fact, it seems that producer Spielberg hadn't really told anyone working on the film about it at the time. Williams would say later of the undeniably creepy situation, quote, In my innocence and naivete, I assumed that these were not real skeletons. I assumed that they were prop skeletons made out of plastic or rubber. I found out, as did the crew, that they were using real skeletons, because it's far too expensive to make fake skeletons out of rubber, end quote. Although these claims have never been proven, it has been suggested that the use of real human skeletons as props may possibly have been the catalyst for what was to come next, as it would become apparent that a dark force potentially hung over not only the original film, but indeed the whole series, leading to several bizarre deaths for those involved with filming and other oddities. The first death would occur just weeks after the release of the original film, when 22-year-old actress Dominique Dunn, who played the older sister, Dana Freeling, was brutal brutally choked by her boyfriend on the night of 30th October 1982. Dunn had been locked in an abusive relationship with a chef by the name of John Sweeney and had actually kicked him out of their shared Los Angeles residence. On the night of the incident, Sweeney had allegedly stopped by to try to work things out, but the conversation had instead devolved into a huge argument in the driveway, ending with Sweeney savagely choking Dunn into unconsciousness and leaving her for dead right where she fell. Dunn would be rushed to Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, where she would remain unconscious for four more days before dying without ever waking up again. Sweeney was subsequently found guilty of involuntary manslaughter and sentenced to six years of prison, of which he would only serve three and a half. In another more recent development, actor Lou Perryman, who played a small role in the film, was savagely murdered in his own home by an axe-wielding escaped convict in 2009. There were other less tragic but nevertheless bizarre oddities orbiting the production of Poltergeist as well. In one incident, actor Richard Lawson, who plays paranormal Normal investigator Ryan in the film, was flying aboard U.S. Air Flight 405 in March of 1992 when the plane crashed into Flushing Bay, New York. Although Lawson survived the crash, 27 of the 51 people on board were killed in the disaster. Another strange series of events plagued actress Jo Beth Williams during filming, when she claimed that the pictures hanging up in her home were always crooked when she returned home from filming. The deaths and weirdness would continue with the film's sequel, Poltergeist 2, The Other Side, released in 1986, which would bring with it two more rather famous deaths and several other ominous signs. The first major death was that of actor Julian Beck, who portrays the evil ghostly preacher Reverend Henry Kane in the film. Beck, who was diagnosed with stomach cancer before filming began, would succumb to his illness in September of 1985, shortly before the film was released into theaters. In 1987, another cast member would die when Will Sampson, 53, who played a Native American shaman in the movie and is perhaps best known as an actor for his role as the mute Native American in One Flew Over, 
Oliver the Cuckoo's Nest, passed away from complications related to a risky heart lung transplant he had received six weeks earlier. Interestingly, during filming of Poltergeist 2, Samson had performed an actual exorcism on the set due to his increasing concerns about the alleged use of real skeletons as props in the first film. Other deaths somewhat related to the production of Poltergeist 2 are also sometimes attributed to the alleged curse. Zelda Rubinstein, who plays a psychic in the movie, was called to be informed that her mother had passed away during filming, and the director himself, Brian Gibson, died of Ewing's sarcoma in 2004. By far the most talked about and well-known death linked to the Poltergeist series is that of young Heather O'Rourke, who portrayed the Freeling family's youngest daughter, Carol Ann, in all three of the Poltergeist films and was inextricably linked to the series for her central, iconic role. Appearing in the first movie when she was only six years old, O'Rourke would be misdiagnosed with Crohn's disease in 1987 after falling ill. When she still became sick the following year, even with treatment for the disease, doctors told her she merely had the flu, but this was not to be the case. When O'Rourke collapsed the very next day, she was rushed to a children's hospital in San Diego where it was determined that she had an obstructed bowel. On 1st February 1988, just before the release of Poltergeist 3, she would tragically die at the age of 12 during an emergency operation, and it was determined that she had actually been suffering from a congenital intestinal abnormality that had gone undiagnosed. The sudden death of this charming little girl who was the face of the series and had up until then been so vibrant and healthy, shocked and saddened the public at the time. Adding a layer of bizarreness to this untimely death is an odd portent from the first film. In one scene, a poster can be seen on the wall of Carol Ann's brother in the movie, Robbie, played by Oliver Robbins, which reads Super Bowl 22. The actual Super Bowl 22 would be played six years later in 1988, just one day before O'Rourke's tragic death in the very same city. The strange events, as well as the deaths of these cast members and crew, especially the fact that they were sometimes totally unexpected, have long given rise to the notion that the production of the Poltergeist movies was cursed. Indeed, at one point, the urban legends and rumors surrounding this quote-unquote curse got so bad that some permutations claimed that one of the child actors died after filming each movie, as well as the preposterous rumor that everyone who appeared in the movies has since died, both of which are untrue. Although the Poltergeist curse has over the years become infamous, is there anything to it, or is this all just coincidence or reaching for patterns that aren't really there? Actor Oliver Robbins, who played the young son Robbie Freeling in the first film, gave his own thoughts on the whole Poltergeist curse when he was asked about it years later in an interview with the Daily Mail. Quote, To be completely honest, I don't think anyone that was involved in the movie ever really took the curse seriously. There is no curse. It is just tragic coincidences. With this curse mythology, I never spoke to Steven Spielberg about it, but I guess he thinks the events that took place were horribly tragic and awful but had no relation to the events that took place on set. People may try and connect the dots and make something out of it, but they are possibly going to make connections that probably aren't there. They do make for great spooky stories, but at the end of the day, they really aren't true." End quote. Or are they? Are the phenomena, incidents, and deaths surrounding these troubled productions just connecting the dots, our psyche queued up by the horror portrayed on screen and seeking to imbue these movies with some form of horror in real life? Are these curses merely the product of spooky coincidences and forming non-existent patterns and relationships between these movies and the weirdness and tragedies they just happen to have been befallen by? Or are there truly strange connections and insidious occurrences pervading these films, orchestrated by inscrutable mysterious forces that we may never fully understand? and were perhaps never meant to. As long as these movie curses continue to be talked about, there will doubtless be those who wonder at the answers to these questions. Whether one believes in literal curses or not, and whether they really exist or not, one thing that seems certain is that knowing about these dire tragedies and creepy accidents behind the scenes imbues these films with a certain menace that alters the way one may view them, making these scary movies even scarier than they ever were before.